Hi class, in this lesson we're going to be talking about propaganda and um, so you want to be taking notes in your through regarding propaganda. Um, to start off, the idea of propaganda is all about persuasion, the art of persuasion. Really, um, it's about spreading ideas or information or maybe even rumors for the purpose of helping or injuring an institution, a cause, or a person. So it really could be um, as big as a government spreading propaganda to, uh, or a country um, spreading prop propaganda to another country, or it could be a person um, sharing information either to help or injure uh, uh, another person or institution or cause. So it's really about spreading ideas. Um, it's also about making us accept or approve something without looking closely at the evidence. We just want to present enough facts so that people assume that it's true, um, but not go all the way to have them necessarily research it. Because if they did, they'd probably find out that it wasn't actually true. Um, and then most of the propaganda devices utilize emotion and really avoid critical thinking. So it's all about getting someone to do something without really thinking about it and motivating them um, because of the emotional reaction that they have towards things. Um, and so I really liked this idea down here, this image that I pulled off the web and it's this us versus them. So uh, it really is about stereotypes being at the heart of all propaganda efforts um, and knowing that their purpose is to create the perception that our actions are always ethical, honorable, while those of our opponents are always unethical and dishonorable. So pay attention to the word always there because um, I think that that sort of helps develop, you know, somebody isn't always honorable or always ethical and um, as much as we try to be. But propaganda does a really good job of helping us uh, believe that we are always good and that they, the, the inevitable, um, the, the them, that they are always bad. Okay, so here are some just little examples, too, of, of propaganda posters that have been used, and we're going to talk about some specific examples here shortly as well. Um, these next seven ideas that I'm about to present to you, it's very important that you copy these down word for word because you are going to be using these seven definitions in a little booklet. Um, so please make sure you copy these down. You can also uh, write the examples that I give here as well. So number one is testimonial. And this is when you use a well-known, respected person to endorse a product or service. There's tons of examples of this, um, but one of them that came to mind to me was Michael Jordan um, while he endorses not only his own products, but other products as well. So Hanes underwear is a Michael Jordan endorsed testimony of, hey, these are, these are good. You must use them because Michael Jordan uses them. Okay. Number two, glittering generalities. So this is when you have words or ideas that evoke a positive emotional response from an audience. And many times in glittering generalities, virtue, virtue words are used. So this was a campaign poster for um, President Barack Obama. He wasn't the president at the time. He was uh, campaigning to be president. But the virtue word that was used was hope. Okay. Um, and remember, you guys can pause this video if you need to pause, if I'm going too fast for you. So pause it in between so that you can get all of these items word for word. 
Number three is transfer. So this is the act of relating something or someone we like or respect with a product. Symbols are constantly used in this form of propaganda. This is different from testimonial because it doesn't necessarily have to be a real person. Testimonial is usually somebody who's famous um, and, and they're speaking up and they're testifying towards the goodness of that product or idea. Whereas transfer is more like a concept. So in um, the World War I and II recruitment posters, we have this concept of Uncle Sam. Now, Uncle Sam isn't a real, wasn't a real person. It was a personification of the American government. And some of the ways that um, we see symbols in this poster is by, first of all, the color usage is red, white, and blue. Okay. We also have the stars in his hat representing the stars and, and the stripes of, of the American flag. And one of the other things that I find really interesting just about this picture in general is um, no matter where you were standing, so if you stood towards the left of this picture or right in front of it or towards the right of this picture, Uncle Sam's eyes and even his finger pointing towards you always are facing you. So it doesn't matter where you were standing when you saw this poster, either from a side angle or from head on, you were going to feel Uncle Sam's eyes looking at you and his finger pointing towards you. So that's just a really interesting way of, of grabbing someone's attention and not letting it go. Okay. Um, number four, plain folks, the use of everyday people to sell a product or service. Speakers and ads appear to make the person uh, to be one of the people. So this is a Swiffer commercial where Jerry Bell, he's talking about how he never has time to sit in his couch and have deep couch sitting because he's always busy cleaning. And Swiffer makes it easy for him to clean up his house quickly so that he can actually sit down and enjoy his couch in some deep, deep couch sitting. Number five is bandwagon. This is when um, this form of propaganda attempts to persuade the target audience to take a course of action that everyone else is taking. Join the crowd. This technique reinforces people's natural desire to be on the winning side. So we kind of refer to bandwagon more when we're talking about sports teams. Like, hey, everyone got on the bandwagon because they're winning right now. But when the team is losing, everyone is not a fan. Um, but you can also use it and see it in propaganda techniques um, for commercials and advertisements. So one of the ways that McDonald's uh, has an appearance of bandwagon is by saying that billions and billions of people have been served food from McDonald's. Number six is name calling, which is the use of names that evoke fear or hatred in the viewer. This technique links a person or an idea to a negative symbol. Um, we also often see this with political figures. You know, um, we, we hear that they're a traitor or a terrorist or uh, a communist or a coward. And so there's a lot of like negative sort of connotations that come with um, politicians in general. But um, it can be done too for um, other products as well, where the negative aspects are being pointed out. And then finally, number seven, the, the last one is card stacking. And this is the strategy of showing the product's best features only and telling half-truths 
and omitting or lying about its potential problems. You guys watched the Ready, Set, Go infomercial, and you may have seen that there are some half-truths in its pre presentation during the infomercial. For example, you know, it's, it's a food that really you still have to cook it and you still have to prepare it. So even though they show that the food was ready in a matter of minutes, you still have to like cut up all the ingredients and actually go to the store and buy the ingredients. So it's not just an instant type of thing, even though they really try hard to make it look that, look that way. Okay, so you are going to um, come up with some ideas for your out next, which is to describe the benefits of understanding propaganda. So in your opinion, you guys can think of some ways and, and turn it to the next slide and I'll kind of give you some specific examples as well. But try to think of some personal ways that you think that um, you would benefit from understanding propaganda well. You also have some homework. Um, next class, I want you to bring an example of each of the seven types of propaganda. So I gave you an example for every single one of these. I want you to go online and find your own example. Now, do me a favor. Don't just Google card stacking and look it up. I want you to think about commercials or advertisements that you've actually seen that would represent card stacking, okay? Sometimes you can come up with some good things when you just Google card stacking, but oftentimes it's not really relevant. So I want you to do some critical thinking here when you're coming up with your own examples and um, try to find those independently of Google, okay? Thank you very much and have a great rest of your week. Bye.